the capacity to diagnose uh, fungal diseases in many parts of the world is low and that's not different from for Kenya. In the capital city of Nairobi, yes, you can get uh, one or two uh, centers where it's possible to diagnose fungal diseases. Uh, we have a center, for example, at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, a mycology lab there that is uh, being developed to be, to be able to offer uh, basic tests for fungal diseases. And uh, in the private care setting within Kenya, there are some laboratories that are able to do that. But outside the capital city of uh, Nairobi, there is hardly any capacity to diagnose fungal disease. The problem of Brazil, that's a heterogeneous country. And in my city, you have a lot of equipment and all the uh, forms to do the diagnosis. But inside the country, in regions that do not have the equipment, there is a lot of uh, poor regions that do not have CT scans, that do not have serol serology, and a lot of things to perform the diagnosis of aspergillosis. In Pakistan, as far as the chronic aspergillosis is concerned, uh, there is a limited awareness about the disease. There is a limited, very limited diagnostic capabilities. Uh, not single lab is doing aspergillus specific IgG testing. That is a cornerstone for the diagnosis of CPA or chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. There is a huge burden of a uh, structural lung disease patient, specifically the post-TB patients and they frequently present with a symptom that are suggestive of a CPA but because of the lack of awareness and the lack of facilities available uh, uh, for the diagnosis of CPA uh, it still is a very very underdiagnosed disease. Uh, or you can say it's a neglected disease. It is a, di a disease that is underdiagnosed uh, and I believe undertreated at uh, our hospital and probably in many areas of the United States except possibly the uh, academic centers. Um, I believe we need uh, more education of the referring clinicians about the disease, uh, of the radiologists that interpret the films, and um, possibly of the pathologists um, and surgeons uh, in regards to diagnosis and treatment of this disease. Uh, my country presently is not equipped to diagnose chronic pulmonary aspergillosis. And the reason why is because, um, one, our clinicians don't have awareness. And with the diagnostic criteria we are coming up with, though we have the clinical acumen to pick the patients and the um, radiological equipment and skills required. However, in our laboratories, we don't do, we don't have aspergillus IgG testing going on presently. My center is uh, located in France or in a country um, with uh, sufficient uh, development of um, medic medicine and uh, we can, in my hospital, diagnose and treat chronic pulmonary aspergillosis either with uh, radiological uh, CT scan, uh, with biological uh, tools, and uh, to treat we, we have access to all the medication. In South Africa, although there may be some clinicians that can diagnose CPA or chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, as a whole the country is not ready. We need to um, know more about uh, our epidemiology, our burden of disease, especially in our smear negative TB patients. We need to understand the epidemiology and the risk factors and who it affects and how, especially with our high prevalence of HIV and TB in our country. And then our labs need to be optimized in terms of um, making sure that we have the best methods of diagnosing aspergillosis in this context. And then I think finally, once we get all of those right, we also need to address um, whether we actually have access to the right treatment, like itraconazole and voriconazole. Are they freely accessible and available? And are they cost-effective treatments for CPA? So I think there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Uganda's capacity to diagnose CPA currently 
is limited um, only in terms of serology uh, because we've we are thinking about three criteria the first one is clinical which we have the second one is radiology which we have in most places and the last one is serological which is not yet available but from the discussions we've had here looks like this could be made available if a public health case is made uh, through collection of epidemiological data that this is an important disease which deserves public health programming. Policy makers are not very much aware as well as concerned about the chronic pulmonary aspergillosis because of the burden of a TB. The TB is, is very very highly prevalent disease in Pakistan. We are the fifth highest burden country of the world and the more emphasis on the diagnosis as well as for the control of tuberculosis and uh, the policymakers are are more prone towards the uh, tuberculosis rather than this neglected disease so at present no one is thinking of chronic pulmonary aspergillosis there is a very big gap in in practice and actually the reality i know we are we are working in a scope of uh, competing disease entities and therefore sometimes aspergillosis may be ignored but the numbers that are, the, are coming up shows that actually there's a very big burden. If this is diagnosed early the treatment outcome is also very good so I think it's worth our governments and even all interested parties to put more effort. We have uh, an awareness problem um, partly because uh, fungal diseases are not on the radar screen of uh, public health uh, practitioners and policy makers and those who manage health. So I do not, I wouldn't say that the Kenyan government, for example, is currently developing policies for diagnosing fungal infections because we have not pushed if I can say that we haven't pushed for those policies to be developed. And we haven't done that because the epidemiology, uh, the burden of disease is unknown. So we don't have very strong, uh, a very strong argument for uh, the country to put into place uh, um, the infrastructure to diagnose fungal diseases. But we are work, we're beginning to work on that. And we think that the steps that we need to take include number one, uh, getting a fairly good grip on the numbers of people who suffer fungal diseases in the country. We have estimates and we need to start using those estimates to lobby government to ensure that there's capacity for diagnosing fungal diseases uh, within the healthcare system across, uh, across the entire country. So we are at that point of beginning uh, to engage with government for the right policies and uh, infrastructure to be put in place. But that is not currently in place, if I must say. Policy makers in South Africa are becoming more aware about um, fungal infections and I think a lot of that is through the efforts of the local South African mycology community uh, made up of clinicians, infectious disease doctors, microbiologists, uh, public health experts and it's because we've um, unfortunately are burdened with such high HIV prevalence and we have a lot of AIDS related mycoses especially diseases like cryptococcal meningitis that cause a lot of deaths in our advanced HIV population, um, the the spotlight has been has been um, shone on fungal infections in our country. Our policymakers, Department of Health, have been at the forefront of addressing these issues, and um, I can say that South Africa is one of the first countries to include crypto screen and treat in their national guidelines, and we are now rolling out nationally. So um, obviously, there's more work to be done, but I think that um, South African policymakers are definitely very receptive to. Um, what's been happening and how to improve um, patients with fungal infections. Uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, very important to adapt our practice in industrial uh, countries to low- and middle-income countries for the benefit of the, of the poor. Mm -hmm.